<laughs> Can I have that hand? Uh, and I need one more. I'll get to that. But first off, I'm going to show you the finger actuated device. Uh, this is for an oyster fisherman. And he got his fingers caught in a winch, tried to pull up the traps. And he's amputated that portion of these two fingers on his right hand. So the idea of this is that these end pieces fit over his stumps. All right? And so though, once that happens, this can be adjusted to fit his hand here or his arm here anywhere. But when he closes his fingers, these close just by the action of moving his fingers, requiring no mechanical anything except the tendon. Uh, what's nice about these, aside from that mechanical action, is that there's no corrosive material anywhere in here. So he works in salt water all the time. And uh, this is TPU. This is nylon. It's nylon filament for the hinge points. It's monofilament fishing line. Aluminum crimps and stainless steel adjusters. So there's nothing that will corrode in the general use of things. If anything fails or breaks or needs to be replaced, it costs about three bucks to make. I mean, it's, it's nothing. So it's a cool device. Lars, you've seen it, but you can pass it along. Dean, is there a name for this design yet? Uh, no. We could name it here. You could all decide on a name. We could come to consensus. We always do. That'll be a first. <laughs> so with this, we can be giving people the fingers. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh. May, I, may, may I ask? Uh, may I ask? Uh, yeah, it's a man. So as far as the attachment to the person's distal finger, is there any uh, consideration for comfort or any kind of padding or bowl skin or anything? Well, especially in an industry where you're you know, using your hands a lot. But using the flexible material, you have some degree of compliance there. But I understand they're already like Alex. Crazy. doing the doctoral work forever. So, yes, once the amputation heals, he's going to have a pretty good callus already. How, uh, how recent was the amputation? Two months ago. So, this is just experimental at this point. And I was contacted by his hand surgeon. And you know, if you've got something that might work here. So I haven't showed it even to them yet. <laughs> so I have the, I did have that. So he has the function of wonderful? Yes. Okay. So he he comes up to about here. Okay. So it's the bend one. Well, no, it's bend one. So it's this. It's just the stuff. You can bend it from this one. Okay. So it's like this motion. Like yeah. This. Okay. Uh, one more thing. I have not published that one yet, uh, but I will. I'll put it on Thingiverse, basically. Uh, one of the things with the struts on the sides, it gives it better lateral stability. I find that if I make just a strict flexi finger with a living hinge out of flex, I mean, you fit it as one, it's great. But it doesn't have that lateral strength. This has more lateral strength. It's still not perfect, but it, it does work much more effectively. And it's very sturdy. TPU, I don't know if you've worked with it, but it's extremely strong. And the nylon is extremely strong. So it has good potential. That's 80 pound test monofilament fishing line. So I think it's going to work out for you. This one is an, uh, John has already, and here, he did that, put it online at one point. This is my analog electric hand in a digital world. It's just a simple switch. It has one tendon, one linear actuator to close the hand, and it works against a fixed thumb. On that thumb, there's a flexible loop, or closure, and that flexible loop will hold it paintbrush, toothbrush, boom, without any anything else. If you needed extra holding, you can close the hand, lift the switch, and you can grip something. I've tried it driving 
it will actually hold my steering wheel and I have to do that. The problem with that is if I need to let go immediately, I, I don't have that ability. But for picking things up, even down to, uh, I think I can do this. Uh, you can pick up very small things effectively. It's, it's a simple device and it works pretty well. I've got a new switch set up. Adafruit just came out with a reversing polarity push button switch. Tiny. Uh, you could put that instead and use that push button switch. Close, stop, open, stop. So that each core pushes, uh, activates, stops, activates, stops in opposite directions. That would be pretty cool too. And it would be a little lighter than this. Uh, it wouldn't be quite as positive an action in a way, but that little switch would be so easy to activate pushing against the table, pushing against your body, using your other hand if you have another hand. So that's pretty cool. This has uh, the strength to hold, I think Bobby said about 10 pounds. The actually is rated at 10 pounds pull. Oh, it has a 10 pound pull on it out of this little tiny actuator. So those are, it's a PQ12S from Actuomics. They're about 70 bucks a piece. You want to get the little adapter that's in here uh, to go from the motor to the battery set. Easier. But it's an inexpensive way to make an electrical device that's fairly effective. And I'm working with the Rotary Club in Portland, and they can, we can make these for about 100 bucks, just over. And they can afford to give those away more than we can afford to give away any other type of electrical device. This gauntlet setup, uh, this is actually just flexible filament in here. These are flexible uh, battens, you might say. And this is just window screen material. It's a plastic one rather than a metal one. But this can fit the upper arm on this particular person. And he has enough room that he can have his whole arm from here. This is a ratchet that goes both ways. So you can tighten it down. It's fairly effective in holding something with not much effort. Uh, it's a little bulky. It works. I like it. We've superseded it already. I haven't even fitted any one of it. <laughs> But it's an interesting design, and it is effective. It's just not going to have a problem with it. Uh, to make the next set of devices real quick here, this hand, and I'll pass it around, this has the thumb loop. It has a finger that a thumb that moves. It has fingers that move. Uh, they're on a nylon pin. I uh, get a piece of nylon filament that goes through, so they're actually quite strong. They use a standard tendon, and they use a standard elastic material, whatever that might be, to return them to position. What's interesting about this design is that if you wanted to wrist actuate a device, you can run all of the tendons inside the hand and out through to a wrist gauntlet and it has uh, a version that has no nothing in here, just takes a flexible hinge, the same as a flexi two hand for wrist actuated. For elbow actuated, the tendons go down the inside to a whipple tree and they come out on the bottom and they go up, uh, I just use a PTFB tube to wherever your uh, focal point, your fulcrum point is. And then that straps on just with the strap. Yes? Uh, can you use the local tree also for the uh, wrist powered one or just for the elbow actuated? I'm sorry. Do you use the local tree for the uh, wrist powered or just the elbow? The wrist powered has individual, or you can do one pair of fingers through one tendon. Okay. 
So you have uh, a little more individual to formable grip. Yeah, you kind of mask that risk deviation. Most of the devices are enabled. So with risk deviation, you're able to go you know, left and right. Whereas if you have the Whipple tree, you can kind of adjust or simulate that grip by the adjustment of the Yeah, the figure that will follow. So it kind of mimics that risk um, deviation. Yeah, and if you have an object like that bottle, the bottle top, and the shape is here, uh, uh, Whipple tree can conform the figures to that. So the risk actuated one, I, I like to do with a loop, but you could do it with four individual pendants. But you could loop one pair of fingers through each adjuster, or two adjusters for the whole hand. Uh, the final piece, I'll pass this one around. It's got one of Skip's nipples. I should say that. Uh, for the finger control. This one has no nylon hinges yet, because uh, I'm I was planning on doing a workshop, Laura Maria, in which we'll assemble everything and we'll see how everything goes together. We have all the pieces to do that, but these haven't had that yet. Uh, you can see the shock cord or elastic cord, bungee cord uh, actuation is quite positive. So you could have a wrist actuated. Four fingers with a passive thumb that will open around something. You could have four rigid fingers with a passive thumb that closed against rigid fingers. You could have movable fingers and a rigid thumb by not putting the shock cord on and just fixing it into place with glue. And so it's kind of a one-size-fits-all terminal device. However the patient wants to configure it, that's up to them. And uh, this connector is just a standard half-inch fine thread that works with a variety of terminal devices, some of which John and Skip have made, some of which are done commercially, commercially, such as the LN4 hand, if any of you are familiar with that. It has a terminal device that threads on the same way. So in theory, if this hand wasn't working out and they wanted just a clasping hand that just did that motion, uh, you get an LN4 end piece and clasp and hold it. Uh, and just screw it on. So everything else, nothing's wasted in that. Finally, and the end of my 10 minutes must be about up, you can pass that around. Uh, this red piece is a socket that just screws on and off. I told you that this bond was superseded, and here's how we're doing it, or what I can see is that we're doing. Each socket, there are four sizes of, of these complete all-in-one hands right now. We, we get a matching size socket, and with that we make, using fiberglass resin casting tape, I have a form for each size. You will cast this in a long form with just like a broken arm cast. And you will take it on site to wherever you're going with the person who, has, who needs this size hand. Uh, you have this long thing on this socket. So you find out the right size hand, the right size socket, and you've got that long cast on there. What you do is, say a person has this much residual lip. You take your long cast piece and you just trim it with scissors. It's fiberglass, it's incredibly durable. It's quite rigid, it's great stuff if you've ever seen any of the new casts. Then you make a mold using the casting material directly on that person's arm. Once you have that mold, you know what size you need, you cut it off a bit. Then you can just put them together and cast those together. And you've got a whole forearm up to the elbow uh, of rigid material that fits perfectly. Because you cast it on that person's own arm. For uh, an L4 
total actuation, the single tendon from the Whipple tree on the fingers goes through that hole into a PTFE tube. The PTFE tube comes up here, and you can get it measured exactly to the fulcrum point, which was a problem we had with both the unlimited arm and the tube type insert. I couldn't adjust it to get that exactly. And if you can't get that exactly, you have your leverage is really messed up. So with this setup, you can get it exactly where you need it. The matching device for the arm up here is just a lever, and you just strap it on with an elastic strap. And that holds the lever in place, and when you close or open your hand, the fingers are. So it's experimental, it hasn't even been fit yet, but that's where we're at. Uh, I have orders right now waiting to be built of 70 yards of different configurations. I'm going down to the Dominican Republic. We've, I've been trying for three years now to finalize it, <coughs> a design that we can really work with. And I think I'm just about there with this hand. With. And I'm going to be working with the University of Southern Maine. They're going to actually build the devices. Between their new makerspace and their engineering department, who want to improve the design, our hope is that we can get a very functional, effective, and good looking device. The aesthetic is huge for this culture uh, that people are going to accept and be able to use. That's going to cost. <laughs> anyway, that's where I'm headed. These are the devices I'm working with. This is what I've been working on, and you guys got it up. Yeah, anybody want to see anything on this set at this angle right here? Yes, I And what Christian's saying, it would be better if two things happened. One, it was and either at a negative five degree, like so, instead of curled that way, uh, I can would also be see more. The, the position of the fingers, too, it looks like they are also uh, contributing to that angle. Yeah, too, they, they continue that. My thought was if you're going to pick something up, like a cup or something, and you want to get it to your mouth, you, if you have that angle already, you're partially there. Uh, whereas if it's out here, to do a lot more work. yeah. So Christian is suggesting a movable joint, and I, that's a great idea. Yes. Definitely, uh, that could be manipulated by the user somehow from minus five to yeah thirty. I mean, that's the orthopedic house. They they made that a standard uh, minus five. Degrees, so and you have your model like this, you can increase the possibilities of the hand to grab different stuff. Yep. Yeah, that would be. So nice. all you really need is 30 degrees of movement approximately yeah. to uh, come from this to that minus five. So do you think maybe then your your device might be useful for people that are able to give that 30 degree turn or, or swivel? Maybe people that aren't able to do that, that might not necessarily be the device for them. No, I'm thinking you could have that movement incorporated within the Oh, okay. Like those. Uh, so you you have the, a range of movement that pivoted in this direction from minus 5 to 30 or 25. I don't know how we're doing on time, but I wanted to say, how would you control that? Well, that's the thing. You'd have yeah, to have yeah. some way of mechanically. You can control. Some of the mechanic processes you can control with the other hand and put the position just with that button that release the position and set the position. You can do the same with the other hand to control the position and set it. Like a lock. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the LN4 hand is actually two interlocking claws and they're on a ratchet. And it's purely mechanical. So you can lock it here or here or anywhere. You can hold a lot of different things with that terminal device. It doesn't look like a hand. 
and it's mounted on a set of straps that, if your residual limb is this short, well, the LN4 ends up up here. <laughs> However, that terminal device, what I'm getting to is that it has this wonderful ratcheting mechanism that closes and locks. And to open the lock, you just press against something, and it releases the ratchet. It's a really wonderful device that doesn't look good enough for most people to accept it in the cultures that I've been dealing with. They reject it whole hot whole. They don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S., I had a little girl. I offered her the option of a hand like this or the LN4. Oh, I want the LN4. Yeah. On one of my gauntlets, so I put a, my gauntlet on the LN4, which is great because it put screwed right in. And she was really happy, but she said, I wanted a robot hand. <laughs> so for kids, it's a, I think we have a different world. You, know? you can fit a lot of different things. You can do Ariel, the mermaid, and superheroes, and all kinds of design things that really sell them to kids. Superheroes, as Laura's had. Uh, but for adults, I think it's a slightly different world. And certainly, what I've encountered in the Dominican and uh, we went to Kosovo last year. And we're going to India this year. Could we go? Huh? Are you planning to go? I'm over in Thailand. What's that? I'm over in Thailand. We're just. We're just uh, oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when are you planning to go? I'm not going. But the Rotary Club that I work with. And the Indian fellow is coming over next week. We're going to meet and show him all the major spaces and everything. So, Maria, I have enough devices to do a workshop and things to put things together. Leave.